In the last lesson, I showed you how to use completable features, run async, and supply async. Before we get on with this very lesson, let us demonstrate the thread that these processes actually run. What do I mean by that? Now, in a process, it's actually possible to check out which thread that process is running on. So I can actually print out thread dot current thread. This will print out the current thread this long process is going to run on. If I go on to the main method and I write long network process, let's run this. So if you look at it, it's running in the main thread. That is why it's blocking the main thread when it takes some time to execute. Now this time, let us use completable features. So if I say completable feature dot supply async, I come over here and I run long network process. I can put in six. And now see, then accept. Once the value is ready, let's print it out. All right. So to make this really nice, let us slip the main thread a little bit. When we run this, can you see that? Now the thread is in the fork join pool, no longer in the main thread. So that's just to prove that this is running on a different thread. I want to treat then apply. So normally if I have completed the feature and I say supply async, I could have a long network process and I put in seven. You can say then accept once it's ready, you can print it out. That's fine. Let's say I have a simple method that takes in a value. Now, if that value is even, it will add one to the value. If it's not even, it will add three to the value and return back the value. So what, where am I going with this? Currently, if I come here, I'll sleep a little. Let us remove this thread statement since we already know the thread it's running on. When I run this, it's going to print out 70. Yes, because it collects 7, goes to long network process, multiplies it by 10 and returns it. So, what if after a long network process, probably I want to take the value, work on it a little bit, probably do some processes and get a refined value. Probably, let's say this network process gets me an ID, then I have another method to get me the username of that ID and I have more operations before I finally get the value. What I can do here is then apply. So I take in the integer and send it to perform some network operations, perform some operations, and I put in the integer. So this will come over here, return the value, come to then apply, and then before accepting. So what is going to happen is seven is going to be sent to long network process and it will end up being 7 times 10, which is 70. Then 70 will come to then apply and send 70 to the sum operations method. And because 70 is even, it will add 1 to 70. And then in the then accepts, 
we are now going to print out what we accepted from the then apply. So look at it as a pipeline. So it comes up, goes down, and similar to the structure of streams. So going from one method to the next, each working on the values. So there we have it, 71 is the answer. And if you wish, you can as well come and have another then apply. This time we'll perform some operations again. So if you look at this, you can have 71. At this moment, 71 is not an even number. So to actually add 3 to 71, which will make it 74. This will result in 70. This will process on 70 because it's even will add 1 to it and return the value. Once this gets 71, it sees that ooh, 71 is odd, so I'll add 3 to it according to my code. And then in then accept. Finally, we can print it out. So let's run this. We should expect 74. Yeah, we got it. So you can use then apply and then spice up your code. This is very useful and very lovely, as you can see. So my IntelliJ is underlining this, not because there's any error, but it's, it's advising me to use the Lambda method reference. So I can actually use, make this shorter. If you're familiar with Lambda expression, you will know what this does. So this is a lot cleaner. It's talking about perform some operations located in the main class. So we have a main class that has this. And of course, print line method in the system out. Let's have a look at the thread where this runs. So I'll say thread.current thread. Run this. You look at it, they as well are running in the background thread, the fork join pool. So when you use then apply, you're not going back to the main thread to run these operations. You're also going to run these operations in the background thread. So this way, your application runs smoothly without any interruptions. Ain't that awesome? You can actually keep adding a chain of elements in such a way that you actually never have an end. So after accepting the value, and let's say you want to run something in the background using your runnable. So a good example will be this very long process. I can as well come here and say then run and Lambda expression, I'll see a very long process. This very long process is going to print done with very long process. If I think I have more things to do, I can say then run, I can use the method reference, which makes it look cleaner. So let's run this. Now, these very long processes didn't print out. Why? Because this long network process takes about three seconds, and then these three lines of code execute quickly. But remember that these very long processes are long processes on their own, and we only slept the main thread for a little while. So the main thread woke up before these guys finished running. So what we can do, probably we can have a, another method I'll call. You know, if you had a full-time application, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to do this sleeping because your application is going to be on continuously. So sleep for a long, sleep for a long while. This time we can make it probably 10 seconds. 
So once we run this, execute this, see the first long process, second long process, and then the whole application is done. So do you see the beauty of completable features? And we're not done. There's still more awesome concepts to look on in completable features. In the next lesson, we're going to cover those. If you did like this lesson, consider subscribing to get more awesome lessons like this. I always try to bring up more awesome content. And if you like this particular video, consider giving it a like.